go ahead and start in the room here with Idris. Uh, just speaking about Afghanistan, um, Congressman Mills introduced articles of impeachment against the Defense Secretary um, because of the withdrawal um, from Afghanistan and what he says were, you know, some <coughs> intel that was ignored. Has the Secretary mm -hmm. spoken um, with the Congressman since the articles of impeachment were introduced, and is he concerned that he could be impeached? Yeah, thanks, Idris. Uh, so uh, they have not spoken. Um, and, and in terms of uh, those articles, I'm not going to discuss any proposed or, or pending legislative actions. Uh, what I would say, though, is uh, that there is no one who cares more deeply for the well-being of service members and their families, uh, whether it's serving today uh, or whether it was serving uh, in Afghanistan, than Secretary Austin. Reason he hasn't tried to reach out to him? Does he believe the the I guess articles are um, don't have merit or, or what's the reason? Yeah, I'm not going to comment on any uh, proposed or pending legislative actions. Hey, Tom. Hey, thank you. Um, yeah, staying on Afghanistan, uh, I did read this statement by the secretary. <clears throat> are there any? You know, today was, is obviously a significant anniversary. Are there any um, ongoing kind of lessons learned or? Um, uh, you know, reflections on what happened in the last 20 years. Like, what's the what's the ongoing process for the Pentagon in terms of what they learned from those 20 years of conflict? Yeah, sure. Um, well, from a Department of Defense standpoint, um, inherently we are an organization uh, that learns from all of our operations, to include those in Afghanistan. Uh, and you see that reflected in a multitude of ways, whether it's at our war colleges in terms of the lessons that we've learned, whether it's in our exercises and how we in inculcate that, or whether it's from personal experience. Um, you know, in my, my own experience, having served in Iraq, having served in Afghanistan in support of Operation Enduring Freedom, uh, every time you engage in those type of operations, you're going to learn things which you subsequently apply uh, in, in other lessons. And so uh, across the board, uh, the department has learned not only from our experience in Afghanistan, but from all of our operations. And we continue to apply those uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, ultimately, this is a learning organization. Uh, and so, um, as a result, what you see is a U.S. military that comes out of 20 years of war in Iraq and Afghanistan uh, that truly makes this the most combat-capable, most credible military the world has ever known for that very reason. Uh, because you have so many combat veterans in our in our ranks. Thank you. Warren. Uh, just a very quick follow-up. Will you ever declassify or release an unclassified version of the DOD after action review that was passed to Congress in April, I believe? Yeah, so I don't have any updates on that front, uh, Oren. That, again, that was a internal report, classified report. Uh, we did provide it to the Hill, but right now I don't have any announcements to make in terms of a, a declassification. And then, if I may... Uh, go over my question limit. Uh, I have a few questions coming out of the um, Gold Star family's hearing earlier this week that I wanted to follow up on. Uh, first, Marine Sergeant Tyler Vargas Andrews has testified that Marine snipers at Abbey Gate spotted someone who they said matched the description of, the sui of a suicide bomber but were denied permission from their superiors to engage the threat. Do you know why? Yeah, I don't have any personal insight into that information. Again, I do know uh, that U.S. Central Command conducted uh, a very comprehensive, exhaustive uh, uh, investigation uh, into the Abigate incident, of course, which is all available on their website and their Freedom of Information Act reading room. Um, but, but again, um, you know, we recognize that it was a uh, uh, a very challenging situation. Military commanders on the ground in Afghanistan made the best decisions and provided their best military advice based on what was known at the time, and, and leaders took appropriate action in response to reported threat streams. Um, and, and since you, again, brought up uh, Abby Gate and the families, um, as you've seen, the Secretary did put out a statement over the weekend on that, but we, again, just want to express our deepest condolences to the Gold Star families who lost loved ones. Uh, in that tragic bombing. And again, we are, uh, as I've highlighted, we are forever grateful for the service and sacrifice of their loved ones uh, and their families. Thank and you. It was, uh, again, from this roundtable, it was said military officials were denied permission two days before the Abigate attack to conduct an airstrike against an ISIS-K cell in Afghanistan. To your knowledge, is that true? And why were they denied, if so? Again, I, or and I would point back to the Central Command investigation. I don't have any additional uh, insight to provide other than, again, at the time, over 100 people uh, were interviewed 
through CENTCOM's investigation. Um, at the tactical level, uh, the assessment was that the Abbey Gate attack was not preventable without degrading the mission to maximize the number of evacuees and that the leaders on the ground followed proper measures and procedures. Was the, and Chairman McCall says question. the, last question, Chairman McCall says the U.S. Intel predicted the exact date and time of the suicide bombing. Is that accurate? Again, Orrin, I'd, I'd point you back to the investigation. Thank you. Let me go to Liz here. Uh, on the UAP website that was uh, released and announced today, um, how can you ensure that the reported sightings are 